Welcome to another week. Reason with Ramadan. Let me just say how excited we are to have you join us this week. We sure hope that this week's word will be a blessing to you. If this is the first time you are joining us, please hit the subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Reason with Ramadan. This week, we look at the thought, the efficacy of prayer, nothing lacking, nothing missing. But before we get in this week's lesson, let me use this time to salute evangelist Reinhard Bonke, who died on December 7, 2019. Record shows that 75 million people received Jesus Christ through the ministry of this passionate servant of God who have been actively ministering for over 60 years. Truly, earth has lost an asset. However, heaven gained and is therefore rejoicing over the arrival of this dedicated servant of God. We offer condolences to his immediate family, church family, and all those who have been impacted by this great man of God. As mentioned before, this week we will explore the theme, the efficacy of prayer, nothing lacking, nothing missing. At the end of this broadcast, you should be able to define prayer, this Distinguish between the four types of prayer and pray more effectively acknowledging the three phases of prayer. I want to start out by defining the word efficacy. Efficacy means the ability to produce a desired or intended result. Some synonyms for efficacy includes effectiveness success, productiveness, fruitfulness, benefit, value, virtue, usefulness, constructiveness, and effectuality. Let's look at prayer. The word prayer comes from an Hebrew word, tefillah, T-E-P-H-I-L-L-A-H, which means supplication or petition. According to the Hebrew Bible, prayer is an evolving means of interacting with God, most frequently through spontaneous, individual, unorganized form of petitioning and or thanking. In simple, prayer is an honest conversation shared with you and God with the intent of adoring him, asking and or thanking him for something. I dare to say that prayer that is effective results in nothing lacking, nothing missing. You may ask, what is the purpose of prayer? There are four main intents of prayer. These encompasses praising and worshiping God. Second, asking for God's forgiveness. Third, asking God for a favor. And fourth, expressing gratitude to God. Based on these four intents of prayer, let's categorize them. Firstly, adoration. This is a type of prayer that focuses on praising God. In Psalm 8 verse 1, we heard David declare, O Lord, our God, how excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Second, contrition. This form of prayer intends to ask God's forgiveness. Psalm 51, David again declared, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies. Blot out my transgressions. Third, petition. This is asking God for a favor. 
In 2 Kings 20 verse 3, after Ezekiel learned that he was about to die, Ezekiel prayed, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. Fourthly, thanksgiving. This is a prayer of showing God gratitude. Showing God how thankful you are for what he has done and most interestingly, for what he will do in the future. Acts 3 verse 8 we saw the crippled man declare, and he leaping up stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Brothers and sisters, in order for prayer to be effective, it must be offered fervently. Fervently meaning having or displaying passionate intensity James 5 verse 16 declares, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Prayer must be sincere. They that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. St. John 4 verse 24. Thirdly, prayer must be honest. He knows what need you have even before you ask, according to St. Matthew 6, verse 8. Finally, how do we structure our prayer? I recommend, firstly, commence with adoration. Adoration is praise and worship. What adoration does to your prayer is to put a point to your prayer. Remember, the Bible says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. In order for your prayer to reach up to heaven, one needs to begin with adoration so that it creates a point that will pierce through spiritual wickedness. That's why Jesus taught his disciples, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Secondly, insert your body. This may be your praise, your request for favor, something that you want, or simple forgiveness, or thanksgiving. Giving God thanks for something. For example, your life, food, health, strength. So often times we fail to give God thanks for the little nothings since we focus on the house, the car, the land, the estates. In closing the third phase of prayer, end by applying your faith and thanking God for the outcome knowing that no good gifts will he withhold from them who walk upright. Psalm 84, 11, B. I want to add, my friend, that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered into the hearts of things that God has in store for you. What impresses God is your faith. This is why the Bible declares that without faith, it is impossible to please God. I also want to highlight that faith for the Hebrew people meant to be passionately committed to action. It means, therefore, in our prayers, we should be committed to thanking God for the unseen. Thanking God for that which you have not yet heard. Thanking God for the good report. Can I dare somebody to thank God for your healing report? Thank God for your financial breakthrough. Thank God for the salvation of homosexuals and prostitutes out there in our country and in our homeland. Can we thank God for salvation of people who are out there participating in drinking and in drugs? Let us thank God. Thank you, Lord. 
Let's now look at what the research says about the effect of prayer. According to a study by the Central State Hospital, the psychological benefits of prayer may help reduce stress and anxiety, promote a more positive outlook, and strengthen the will to live. Are you stressed? Are you depressed? Are you discouraged? Prayer is the answer. Prayer is effective. Prayer, my friend, is productive. The Washington Post has stated that prayer is the most common complement to mainstream medicine, far outpacing acupuncture, herbs, vitamins, and other alternative remedies. Are you ill? Are you sick? Are you in pain? Prayer, my friend, is your answer. Brothers and sisters, I want to submit to you that prayer when offered sincerely, honestly, and fervently is fruitful and productive. To reiterate, the effectual prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let's now look at a testimony of a prayer that was answered recently. A baffling and beautiful rescue, raising questions about the power of prayer. People are scouring nearly 70 photographs looking for some sign of a man they swear they saw at the scene of a car accident. He prayed a life was saved. So why did he disappear even from the photos? ABC's David Muir now on Faith and a Mystery Tonight. Tonight it's being called the Missouri Miracle. Much of it, though, still a mystery. A teenager with a beautiful smile, 19-year-old Katie Lentz, trapped in her mangled car, hit by a drunk driver, and first responders trying to get her out. Sheriff's Deputy Richard Adair won't forget when the fire chief turned to him in despair. He was concerned because he was out of options. The tools weren't working, and uh, it was, by that time, I, I said almost an hour. He said, I don't know how we're going to get her out. And I said, Raymond, we, I promised her mother and her that we'd get her out. While inside that car, Katie had one request, to pray with the rescuers out loud. And then suddenly right there amidst the rows of corn at the scene blocked off for nearly a mile, a man appears. He was dressed in a black priest shirt with a white collar. And the rescuers notice something else. He was carrying a small bottle. He had a small little white container of anointment oil is what it appeared to be. And he asked if he could anoint um, the girl in the car. And at first, my first thought was that it would possibly send the wrong message to Katie, that maybe we had called a priest. But they allow him to do it. A sense of, of calmness come over her then, even more so than what she had been already. I can't be for certain who said or how it was said or where it come from. We very plainly heard that, that we should remain calm, that uh, our tools would, would now work and that we would get her out of that vehicle. Moments later, it happened. A neighboring fire department arrives with a new set of stronger tools, finally able to cut through that frame. They all turned to thank the priest, but he was gone. In fact, in all of those photos at the scene, no sign of the priest. And tonight, family and friends are grateful. Whether it was just a, a, a priest as an angel, serving as an angel, or an actual angel that came in, he was an angel to, to all those and to Katie. The fire department's Facebook page tonight filling up fast. Do any of the responders know who the priest was that seemingly appeared out of nowhere? I would love to shake his hand. And tonight from Katie's mother, a message too. Very pleased that Katie's near tragic accident provides proof to all that miracles still happen. Her mother adding, please continue to pray for her. And in Katie's words, pray out loud. Pray out loud. And today we reached out to 15 churches within 30 miles of that accident scene. No one could tell us who the man was. And as for Katie, six and a half hours of surgery, many broken bones, but her mother says her face and that beautiful smile untouched. But Diane, everyone at that rescue scene touched by that stranger. And dozens of people saw him and yet nothing in the photographs. Nothing. Just the story of that white bottle. What an amazing story. Thank you, David. Wow. Instantly help came, and what was impossible with men, with the rescue responders, became possible with God. 
What is it you are desiring today, tonight, right now? What is that you want from God? Will you pray with me? Let us pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for this broadcast. I thank you for all those who will listen and for those who have been inspired, touched, and empowered by the word shared in this broadcast. Father God, we just worship you, we praise you, we honor you, we thank you for just being God. Father, we know that you are El Jairi, the God who provides. You are El Shalom, the God of peace. You are El Shama, the God of the future. Oh God, you are El Roy, the God who is present. You are El Makadesh, the God who sanctifies. You are El Tisno, the God of our righteousness. You are El Gibor, the Lord strong and mighty in battle. Lord God, we come here representing the needs of all those who have listened to this broadcast. Father God, we know that you are the God who answers prayer. We know that prayer is the foundation of power. Prayer is at the root of the church. We also know, God Almighty, that prayer is the way to any confused situation. Lord, be ready for those who are sick. Please, Lord, heal them. Give them a testimony. Those who are facing financial difficulties, open doors to them. Those who are not saved, save them. Those who are troubled, give them peace. Those who are angry, bring them, oh God, to a calm state. Whatever their need is today, tonight, right now, God, I represent it as your servant. And I thank you, Lord, for answering this prayer. I thank you for the miracles that has been working right now. I thank you for the souls that have been healed, souls that have been saved, and souls that have been touched. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to leave with you something I read that Dr. Miles Monroe shared. Dr. Miles Monroe postulates that the difference between Jesus Christ and us Christians is that Jesus spent more time with God, more time in prayer, more time in reflection, more time in introspection. And as such, when he was faced with the various trials, with the various tribulations, with the various demons and devils, he spent less time with them. Contrary to us, we spend more time with people on social media, <laughs> talking, conversing than we spend with God. Prayer is very important to God. That is why he used to come down in Genesis in the cool of the day to commune with man. Luke chapter 18 verse 1 establishes that men are to always pray. Remember, in Acts chapter 12, while Peter was in prison, the Bible says that Prayer continued without ceasing. In Acts chapter 16, Paul and Silas were thrown in jail. And the Bible says at midnight they prayed and sang psalms. And there was a mighty shaking. Jesus, before leaving earth, said to his disciples, Go and tarry, wait, pray until the Holy Spirit is come. But when the Holy Spirit is come, he will endure you with power. And then you shall be my witnesses. My friend, it is better to pray than to preach. It is better to pray than to sing. It is better to pray than to attend all the conferences that we attend from day to day. Remember, Jesus and seeing his disciples wrestling to cast out demons, having cast them out himself, the disciples came and said, how did you do this? Oh God, and Jesus says, son, these go out by way of fasting and prayer. Fasting is the foundation.
foundation of the church. Prayer sits at the base of the church. Even as you continue in prayer, I hope that this broadcast will strengthen your prayer relationship with God. I now declare over your life the ironic blessing. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. By way of announcement, I want to let you know that Team Rabdan will be ministering at the Mountain View Church of God of Prophecy on Wednesday, December 11, 2019 at 7 p.m. Yes, that is this Wednesday. So be in prayer for this event. Come and join Pastor Allen and the brethren in a night of adoration. On Thursday, we switch gear to Content Retreat, December 12, 2019 at 7 p.m. A night of prayer at the Glad Tidings Church of the Firstborn under the leadership of Deacon Cole. The team will then journey to Spanish Town Beulah Missionary Church on Sunday, December 15, 2019 at 11 a.m. Come and fellowship with Pastor Cheryl Faison, awesome woman of God. We wrap things up in Waitabi Chilani on Sunday, December 15, 2019, as we join Bishop Dr. Owen Reed in his 40th anniversary celebration in ministry. This man has sold so much into who I am today. And so I invite you from near and far to come and help us celebrate the man of God. Until next time, God bless you. Please like, share, subscribe, tell a friend, tweet a friend, share it with a friend. Remember the efficacy of prayer. Nothing lacking, nothing missing. I dare you and challenge you brothers and sisters to go forth praying in adoration praying in thanksgiving praying to the most I God and I dear you I promise you that you will have nothing lacking and nothing missing God bless you Shalom